Wes, and today it's time to look at a new light that I feel like is kind of shaking up the market a little bit here. It is the new GVM SD300B Pro. So GVM has long been known for making high value products. Basically, if you want to get a certain amount of light, GVM will give it to you for the least amount of money. But now they're slapping this, uh, this pro thing on the side here. Oh, it's over here. Does that mean we're gonna be paying more? Well, let's find out. But first, just so you know, this video is not sponsored by GVM. This video is brought to you by Dossier. I have had offers from other brands in the past, but I didn't want to accept ones that might conflict with the reviews that we do on here of camera photography videography supplies. So I was really happy when Dossier reached out to me because I am big on smelling good. <laughs> Let me explain. As a photographer, event photographer, wedding photographer, I am often in close quarters with a lot of people in hot, sweaty situations. We shoot all summer, things get messy, and I like to smell good. And one of the things that is always in my go bag, deodorant and cologne. As such, I have a bit of a problem. I have racked up quite a few bottles of cologne and that can add up pretty quickly over time. You're paying for fancy bottles, you're paying for branding, you're paying for advertising. Whereas Dossier, it really fits the bill for me in that you have a minimalist design, you're not paying for billion dollar ad campaigns, you are getting exactly what you want, and they have tons of selection on their website. If you're not sure what you want, go have a look there. If there is something else that you're familiar with, they have a way of searching for comparable items, and these are each 50 bucks, whereas Designer scents can often cost you $100, $200, $300 a bottle. <laughs> and I need to point out, it has one of my favorite things. It's got magnets. <laughs> if you have watched my previous videos, I love things that have magnets in them. So I have personally opted for two scents myself that really suit me. The Ambery Mint, which is kind of a darker, richer more evening and winter tone, and Woody Sandalwood, which is a warmer tone and a little bit more universal seasonally. And if you want to pick something up, there's links down in the description below so you can get hooked up there for less than designer scents. And now back to it, starting with, as always, the build quality. Now this is where they most obviously stepped up their game. Almost everything here that you see is made of metal. It is rock solid in almost every way. Ugh. There's almost no give to that. We have a metal Bowens mount, got a metal frame, metal subframe, metal back panel. The screen is a little squishy. It's not glass, but the screen is recessed. We have metal knobs. Basically, if you had any complaints about the previous products being a little bit cheesy in build quality, those are gone now. Let's look underneath the hood here. As you can see underneath, everything is very sturdy. All the pieces are very hard. Now, the only concern that I do have is that the screws holding the plates together are smaller than I would expect. And a lot of lights, the screws, especially holding on the Bowens mount, are quite a bit bigger. So the ones holding on the mount are medium sized, but then the plate that the mount is attached to are quite small. At least there are quite a few of them though. So that's the only thing that gives me pause for the build quality here. But overall, I'm gonna give that a 9.5 out of 10. It's what we've been asking for, they delivered. Feature set. And here we have kind of no real surprises. We have bicolored LEDs, COB light on the front of it here. Now we do have DMX in, DMX out, not all of them have that. Got two knobs on the back, I hate it when they only have one. We've got our buttons. But is this the easiest interface? Well, we'll also have a look at the app here, and as you can see, their app is very simple. And one thing that they've added to it is the dimming curve. I do test the output of these devices, and to see if it's linear or not. And here, now you can decide whether or not it's linear right from the get-go. So the linear curve, or rather, is not a curve. It's a straight line. It keeps it very firmly on the up and up. There's no surprises here. We can very quickly change our light output and our color off and on as well. We have source matching functions for various types of lights. 
And we have our effects. We'll talk more about the effects in a little bit here. One big feature for me is that we do have a native bones mount. They almost all do these days, so that's no big surprise. Let's take a look at some of the effects now. We'll start with the candle, which I find is often the weakest link in the effects in a lot of these lights. It'll be too jumpy, too abrupt. But as you can see, this one has a nice nuanced pulse and glow to it. I'm quite pleased with that. And then the uh, CCT cycle. It's hard to miss with that one, but it looks pretty smooth. Some of them can be jumpy, but most aren't. Now, I should have done this with the app instead of manually, but uh, so I could keep my hand out of the way for you. Sorry about that. Now we're looking at the television. That's a little bit sharper in its presentation. And the paparazzi mode. Nice and blinky as it should be. Campfire. Mm, that seems a bit too abrupt to me. A very explosive campfire going on here. And on the fireworks, that should be explosive, and it is. We have a few different pulse levels. It would be nice if fireworks automatically spread all around the CCT spectrum, but I don't think I have any lights that have done that to date. There's an idea for you, GVM. Give me warm, give me cool. Simulate multiple colors, please. And welding, that should be some pretty sharp... Oh yeah, I like that. It starts hot and then cools down real fast. Very nice. So overall, most of our effects are pretty good. They're not all perfect, but it's up there. The power level varies greatly from the ends of the spectrum. Let me bring up the chart here. So when we crank this up to 100%, our full output at 5600K, we find close to our max output, 306 watts. But as we go up to 6800K, we're at 273. Then down to 2700K, we have 257. So we don't necessarily get the full 300 watts at all times. It's close, but it's not necessarily there. Even so, this is significantly brighter than most 200 watt LED mono lights. Now, one feature that we are missing, which as we go up in power here, it's less likely to be found, but there is no way of natively running this on battery. The uh, power supply going into it here is putting out 60 volts. So this isn't the 48 volt standard that's normal for a lot of these things. So a lot of the time you'll see a DMX connector on something like this, which is a little more universal. But this one is a more proprietary connector. It's kind of a liquid seal thing, but I'm not a big fan of that, having a proprietary connector. It's a little harder to service. So overall for future set, I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. Usability, I have two main annoyances with this, and you can see one of them now that I just restarted it. When you start this, it boots up to a selection screen of CCT, source, or effect, and we can select between them. It never just boots up into the mode that you were in to begin with. Now the light is on, but to interact with it I have to select CCT. That's a minor gripe. Primarily, my biggest gripe is that when I press this power output knob, it doesn't have quick steps, which a lot of them do these days, and the control is very granular. Every time I turn this knob one click, it goes up a half of a tenth of a percent. So I have to turn it twice to get 0.1%, and so if you're going up a lot, now it goes faster when you turn it faster, But that is still a lot of knob spinning if you want to make a big change to your power output. So I would either want a knob that adjusts faster or gives you those shortcut clicks because it can take a long time to make big changes to this. Now, as we've seen, the Bluetooth control app is very, very simple to use. Honestly, it is about my favorite one just because it's very straightforward. A lot of other brands use this same sort of interface, but when you go up to like the Sidious app for Amaran and Aperture, you have a lot more options and the op app is much more complex. So you get some kind of trade-offs there. Another gripe that I have with this, and this could be easily remedied just by having a better setup. The DC line on the power brick is about five feet long, and that's just like one to two feet too short for most setups. Normally you're gonna have your light about six feet in the air, 
and it's just not long enough. And so you end up putting a lot of pressure on the, uh, the strain relief up here and on the end of the brick. A lot of bricks these days come with built-in wire so you can hang your brick from the light stand very easily. Whereas with this one, you're going to have to get like a third party solution to attach this to your light stand so you don't end up wrecking this proprietary connection cable. I do understand that there's probably a limitation to how long this wire can be because we're up to 300 watts of power output, but either make it a little thicker and a little longer or include a hanger for me, please. Speaking of the brick itself, this thing gets quite hot if you leave it at max output for a while. So if I leave this at max output for two or three hours, this brick gets up to 62 degrees Celsius, which feels uncomfortably warm to the touch. The light itself, however, doesn't tend to exceed about 39 degrees Celsius, which is reasonably cool to the touch, all things considered, with the amount of power going through this. The fan, quite quiet. You can manually set the fan if you want. There are fan settings right in the menu here. You can have it on smart, high, or silent. So on silent, you're, you are going to be limiting your light output, so I'm not sure why you would use that, because if you're already on smart and your light output is very low, you're not going to hear this anyway. If you set it on high, it goes up to about 42 decibels at 3 feet. On smart, most of the time it's at 38 decibels. So not a huge difference there, but on high, you can definitely hear it, whereas on low, it kind of disappears into the background. Most of the time, it's inaudible as such. It takes a long time for it to get heat soaked. The uh, release is on top here, which is convenient sometimes. I find it has a very nice tactile feel to it, but if your light is way up on a softbox, it's hard to reach it around the top. There are ups and downs to almost any release, but this one, it doesn't feel stiff or stuck or finicky like a lot of them do. This always feels fantastic. And even the release switch little slider thing here, totally unnecessary is made of metal. Very nice touch. And the Bowens mount on this is tidy righty lefty loosey, which is the way it's supposed to be, unlike some lights. Overall, for usability, we have a few ups and downs, mostly ups though, it's gonna be an eight out of 10. Like quality, we have a CRI of 97, TLCI 97, that is a very high TLCI, unusually high. They are using latest generation COB LEDs on this thing. And for me, one of the biggest things for light quality is just having a Bowens mount built into it and it's a nice bones mount. But what does it actually look like? Let's take a look at some sample footage. Indoors, obviously this has enough power to get the job done, but outdoors with a small enough softbox when you're close enough, with this kind of power, you can actually use this in midday sun, which is crazy. Now I would recommend even more power if you're really going to use a medium sized subject, but the fact that we now have affordable LED lights that can work in this kind of setting is fantastic. So for the light quality, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. You can't get much better than this right now. Value, and this is where we expect GVM to do well, and this is where I was most concerned in making this review. And this thing comes in at 390 US dollars. I was surprised. Why? Because the GVM SD300D, this is their previous high output light. That thing retails for $590, way more than this. I don't know how they got the price down so low on this light with this kind of build quality. It's kind of shocking, really. All right, let's compare it to the rest of the market. We've got the Sure C300B for $630. It's quite a bit more. It's a little bit old now, I think. Colbor has the CL330, which is a really nice light. It's got the NATO rails on it and everything. It's a little longer than this, but a little skinnier. That one comes in at $550. This. The tiny, but two-sectioned, Zhiyun Molis G200. Now, it's a 200 watt light. So in a boost mode, this thing can get up to 285 watts, which honestly trades blows with this, which is kind of crazy. 
And so that one comes in at $380. Ooh, it's a little bit less, but that's only in boost mode and it gets pretty loud when you have the output that high. It's not really designed to always run at that output. We have the small rig RC350B, quite a bit more power that pushes 400 watts for $900. Nan light, much more comparable, SFS300B, $400. Very, very close there. And then if you go up market just a little bit, you've got the Godox no LED M300 buy for 990, Aperture LS 300X for a thousand dollars. So where does that land us? That lands us very cut and dry at a 10 out of 10. For a reliable 300 watts output, you can't really do better than this. And the shocking part is, it's not just a light that's made out of Swiss cheese. This is a really well constructed light. I am kind of shocked. <laughs> so what does that give us for a total score? That gives us a 46 out of 50 or a 92%. That is one of the highest scores that I've given to a light. I am pretty surprised. Now previously GVM would make up their points based on their feature set and their value and that's about it but they really knocked it out of the park with this one. If you have any questions or comments about this light let me know down in the comments below and I'll get back to you on that. I am excited to see what else GVM comes up with in the future. We're kind of entering this era where these previously smaller Chinese brands that used to kind of occupy the bottom of the market space are really gunning for the top and that's exciting. We have a lot of competition going on right now. But until next time, go take some photos, make some videos.